In this video, we're going to talk about bar graphs. You've probably seen bar graphs, read bar graphs, but it's important to know the different pieces and parts that make up a bar graph, and that's what we're going to learn about today. So we are talking about bar graphs, and a bar graph is a type of graph that's drawn using rectangular bars to show how large each value is. The value is the data that you've collected, what you're reading about on that graph. The bars on a bar graph can either be horizontal, they go across, or they can be vertical, meaning they go up and down. So let's talk about the parts of a bar graph. The first thing we want to talk about are the, is an axis. Okay, These are the lines on the graph you measure from to find a value. On every bar graph, there are two axes. So you have an axis. One will be horizontal and one will be vertical and that's where you start to read the graph. And we're going to go, we're going to look at a bar graph and we're going to see where all of these parts are. So let's get the definitions down first. A title. Every graph has a title just like a book and when you go to pick up a book in the library the first thing you look at is the title and then maybe the author. So your bar graph has to have a title and then that way you know what you're reading about, what information has been gathered, um, what you're talking about. So the title gives you an idea of the information being presented in the graph and the title is always at the top of the graph. So you want to find that first <coughs> excuse me, and read it so you know what you're looking at on the graph. Okay. The next thing that we need to know about are the labels that you put on a bar graph. And these are simply words that are written that tell us what is being presented on each axis. Remember there are two axes. One goes across and so it will have a label on it telling you what that is. And then there will also be a label on the vertical part and it will tell you what you're reading about there. So the labels are the words that are on the axis. Alright, next, intervals. An interval is the measure of the amounts of the different groups. This is what's on one of the axes and it tells you how much each space counts for. And we're going to look at one in a minute and so that may make more sense. But it's simply the measure of the amount of the different groups that you've put the information about on your bar graph. And then finally the bars themselves and they're just rectangular blocks that now represent the data that's been collected and put on this graph. So let's take all of these words and let's look at a bar graph and see if we can find all these parts on there. So here I have my graph that I've drawn and the first thing, you know, here are all of the parts that I need. So what's the first thing you look at when you look at any graph? The title. Okay, so what's the title of my bar graph? Well, this one is Favorite Places to Visit. So, this is my title. It's at the top, and this tells me that this bar graph is going to talk about favorite places to visit. So, somebody's gone out and asked a bunch of people, what's your favorite place to visit? And gave them some choices, and they chose from these different places, and we collected some data. All right, so we've got the title. We'll check that off. Then, what else is easy? The bars. Okay, bars, here are my bars. These are the bars. So here's a bar. There's another bar. I'm just writing the word bar in there. So this is where my information is being represented in different colors. So we know the bars. Now let's look at the axis. How many are on each graph? Two. Two axes. This is one axis here, goes across, and my other axis is here. Because remember, this is where I start to get the information to, that I need to, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to read the graph. So on this axis, I have the words museum and park and gardens and science center and library. So whoever went out and collected this information, these were the choices that they gave the people that they talked to. And they said, I'm making a graph about favorite places to visit of these, which is your favorite place to visit. What is missing on this axis? A label. We need to put a label down here. So what could we label this? Museum, park, gardens, science center, library. 
we could call this places in town. So my label will be down here, places, and we could even say the well, places in town, we could say places in Lynchburg, that could be Amazement Square, um, different places we could go. So this would go underneath down here, it says places in town, so that's one of my labels. But then I also need to label this. What do you think these numbers stand for? 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's simply the number of people. So I have number of people. That's the number of people who answered each of these. So now this axis also has a label. My label down here, places in town. My label here, the number of people. So I have my labels done. And we talked about the axis. One's here, one's here is where we start reading our information. And intervals. Remember I told you that's hard to understand until you look at the graph. Well, here are my intervals. See this line from here to here is an interval. From here to here is an interval. From there to there. So the space between each of the lines, this is my interval. And it's very important that you look at these intervals before you start reading your graph. Because if I just looked, I might think that's one, two, three, four, five. But if I look on my axis where I've labeled it number of people, I can see that it's zero, two, four, six, eight, and ten. So my intervals are by twos. From here to here is two, from here to here is two, from here to here is two. So each of my lines represents two. I couldn't say, oh, I want this one to be zero to two, and then I'm going to make this one three, and then I'm going to make this one four. Your intervals have to be equal. So here we have zero, two, four, six, eight, ten for the number of people. My interval is two. <clears throat> so if I want to read this first one, and I wanted to ask you how many people chose the museum as their favorite place to visit, you start on this axis, you read up, and then I go to this axis and I say four. How many people like to go to the park? Find my park, start at this axis, read up to where the bar stops, go over here, six people like to go. Science Center, this was a science crowd right here. Science Center, how many people would I like to go to the Science Center? All the way up, eight. So I have eight people who thought that the Science Center was the best place to go visit. That was their favorite place to go. Okay, so those are my parts. My title, my axis, I've got my labels, the bars, and I've read my intervals. It's very, very important. You always have to look at those intervals first. So I could ask you a question, how many people in all were surveyed? How many people did they ask? Well, that's simple enough, right? I've got four plus six plus two plus eight plus four. And I could just add up those numbers and then I know how many people responded to the question, what's your favorite place to visit? Okay, let's look at one more because remember I told you back at the beginning, the bars can go vertically or horizontally. Okay, so here's my horizontal bar graph. And the question that was asked here is how do you get to school? Your transportation to school. How did you get to school today? Okay, so this is my title. So we'll go over here and I know where my title is. And then here's one axis goes across. And even though the bars go horizontally this time, these are still my two important axes, one across 